Welcome to the Faith Community of St. Dennis for the celebration of Mass today. Today we celebrate the fourth Sunday of Easter. Our presider at this Mass is Father Lou, assisted by Deacon George. We remember in a special way at this Mass Diane Travis Keller, Gloria Smith, and Mary Corcoran. As we begin our celebration of Mass, please stand and join in singing our gathering in number 858, The King of Love.
almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. <laughs>
reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, see what love the Father has bestowed on us, that we may be called the children of God. Yet so we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, but we shall be has not yet been revealed. We do know that when it is revealed, we, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. The Word of the Lord. Christ and all of us who believe in him 
uh, might have eternal life. And so, uh, in baptism, the Holy Spirit came into us. We renewed it during our uh, on, on Easter Sunday. We knew what has happened, but of course we forget who we are and that we are God's son and daughters. Uh, the gospel today you know, tells us you know, Jesus is the good shepherd, the good shepherd. And uh, a normal shepherd raises, you know, he's good with the sheep because he wants to get the wool and use it, you know, for his own clothing and to sell it. Also for the meat, that, you know, for dinner. Uh, but our good shepherd uh, is not looking for anything from us. You know, he's, he's not, he wants to put clothing on us. He wants to give us food, you know, which he does, you know, when we come together, uh, celebrating the Eucharist. Uh, he's the God that, you know, we were clothed with uh, the Holy Spirit in, in our baptism, our confirmation, even like the, the prodigal son, when he, he comes back uh, after wasting his father's uh, heritage, in, in his inheritance, what does he do? He gets a coat, he puts a coat on him. He has a party with good food, feed food. And so how different, you know, uh, our God is to um, the regular shepherd in, in, in our lives. We see also in, uh, in our reading today that there also are shepherds that are good uh, that take us away uh, from Jesus Christ. Takes us away from uh, listening to his word. And you see the relationship. You know, my sheep know me. There's a, there's a knowledge. And so it's important for us to be developing a good, close relationship with the Lord uh, you know, in, in, our, in our lives. When we, um, when we renewed our baptismal commitment, you know, we said yes to Jesus Christ, but we also said uh, no uh, to Satan in the words of his way of thinking. And they're, they're very, they're not always dramatic, and it's very subtle ways in which you know, he gets into our minds and um, draws us away from living our lives according to his way of thinking and to uh, the evil ones way of thinking. Peter Kraft, a philosopher, uh, kind of mentioned, you know, why is there such a hostility uh, in our, the times in which we are living uh, to Jesus Christ and to the Catholic Church in particular? There is a, a real uh, battle that, that's going on. And um, he mentions there's a Christophobia, a fear of Christ, is the deepest motive behind the world's fear and hatred of the truth that the Christ Church continues to preach. And so, if the church is preaching what the Lord has been telling us, we have to expect a hostility just as he did. He continues, um, the truth that the, the Christ church continues to preach, the intolerance and the 
divisive claim that Jesus alone makes about himself. You know, he says there's only, you know, Jesus Christ alone is the Savior. He saves us from our sin. All of us are sinners in need of salvation. The old saying, um, I'm okay, you're okay, is not the truth. We see uh, in, in the first reading today, uh, Peter, how he reacts uh, to the same people that he was afraid of. I mean, he, he believed in Jesus Christ. He said, I will die for you, Lord. And then we know that things got difficult. He was afraid of what was going to happen to him. He denied him three times. And the same person is now in front of the same religious leaders and political leaders. There's a whole different personality. And uh, he tells them the truth. You know, they're, uh, they don't like Jesus Christ. They're afraid of what it's going to do to them. Or the demands on their life. And he's, he says, do you know why I hear? And he healed them. The reason why he's being pulled up is because he, he healed someone. He and John paralytic. He was walking, jumping all his life. He was outside and all of a sudden he's been healed. And so it's in the name of Jesus Christ that he's healed. And he tells him directly and you crucified him. You were responsible for him. And Peter realized he's been responsible as well and all of us because of our sins and the sins of all history and uh, repent for your sins and follow Jesus Christ. And so there were real forces there taking them away from Jesus Christ that really keeps us connected with God uh, the Father. It continues to say There can't be two gods, there can't be two lords, can't be two saviors. That we can't be faithful to both at the same time. We can't have the sacraments of Christ and also the sacraments of the Antichrist. There's a choice we have to make. You know, the sacraments or what gives us life, the sacraments, we're coming in touch with Jesus Christ. When we come there, there's a certain action when we come into church uh, of God wanting to come to us. Now, the anti-sacraments are those things that are plugging us into the thinking of the evil one. And so he goes on to say the sacraments, the, the antichrist is the sexual revolution. The very fashionable sacraments of pornography, of fornication, divorce, contraception, abortion, same-sex marriage, transgenderism. We cannot do that any more than we can be faithful to two spouses. We cannot, we cannot reconcile the light and the dark. At one time we, we lived in what was called Christian men. And that was a time um, when the structure, even though the structures of society were Christian, even if people were not Christian themselves, um, the media, I mean there were certain codes that they had for movies. Sin was sin, but they call it sin. You know, there was fornication, but it was called what it was. There was divorce, and they called it for what it was. Um, now, good is evil, and evil is good. And so he says that there's been a great exodus uh, 
from the Catholic Church. And he says, the main reason is that they leave because they want to be part of the seven sacraments of the sexual revolution. And I, I was reflecting on that. And back in the 60s, Pope John Paul II, when he was asked about what is it that drives us into wars? And he said, uh, the rejection of God's vision for human sexuality. I didn't understand it at the time, but I understand it more and more in the times in which we live. Even if that amount, uh, Sister Lucy told me, through, told the Pope through a, um, one of the Cardinals um, that the last battle is going to be over the family. And the sexual revolution certainly has done that uh, to family life through a, a closer pattern. And so um, we're connected to Jesus Christ. And, and what is you know, the Lord telling us you know, in our times. Pope Benedict, a great mind, said there were, he said that Fatima, the message of Fatima, is more relevant for our times than it was back in 1917. He told the children about uh, Russia spreading their errors of coming. I mean, they were, the Tsar was still you know, running uh, that and, and praying for Russia. And so those who, under uh, my time as a youngster, uh, were praying for the conversion of Russia. And, and so, and she had a very simple message for us turn back to Jesus Christ, be plugged in. Wherever our lives, we need to repent to be that. And to do that, He called us uh, to to pray, especially of the rosary. He told us to put a little flesh in the game. You know, do penance. And these three little children do penance. They they had a vision of hell, and um, and people were going there in numbers. Things didn't seem to be as bad then as they are today. And so putting flesh you know, in, into the game. And so the Lord is, uh, is the same good shepherd who wants to take us. He, he dies so that we might have eternal life uh, for these people. And so he calls us uh, today um, to make a decision, you know, to really to pray, to really live lives the way he is calling us. And uh, it seems that Mary has in God's plan uh, for the last almost 200 years been using her with a, a message. And so why don't we conclude this evening together praying the prayer of Hail Mary. Hail Mary.
words of our church, may the voice of Christ be our guide and lead us to a deeper trust in Him. In particular, on this World Day of Prayer for vocations, we pray that any young men and women may hear the voice of Jesus, inviting them into the lives of service, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who govern, may God grant them the ability to be guided by God's word and the natural law, we pray. Lord, we pray for the safety of all our military, police, and firefighters. We pray. Lord, hear our for peace in all nations, that we may be witnesses of a committed Christian fostering an increase in respect for life. We pray. Lord, hear our for those burdened by any kind of difficulty, may Christ shine his healing light upon them. We pray. Lord, hear our that this faith community may grow in holiness and spirit of thanksgiving for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all scientists and their research, for God's blessing and inspiration and the grace and perseverance as they seek answers to important questions for the good of all humankind, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. And grant to our deceased brothers and sisters a share in the glory of our risen Lord. Particularly remember those for whom this Mass is intended, those whose names and faces we now recall. We pray. Lord, hear our And for those burdens and anxieties that are with us at this time. Spread with each of us as we prepare to share in this simple meal. We pray. Lord, Loving Father, we bring to you our prayers, entrusting them to your holy will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. As we prepare the table, please join in singing number 891, by Shepherd Girl Supply My Name, number 891.
so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation, at all times to proclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all, to lure you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For with the old order destroyed, a universe cast down is renewed, and integrity of life is restored to us in Christ. Therefore overcome with paschal joy, every land and every people exalts in your praise. Even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim.
We offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, greater than the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, David, our Bishop, and all the clergy and people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, all we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you with your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. We're excited about a pop-up children's choir <coughs> for Mother's Day that will be occurring at Mass at the Beach Chapel at the 10 a.m. Mass on May 12th. Please see the bulletin for information about our practice times for this special way for children to celebrate with their mothers this May. And please feel free, free to contact the rector with any questions. We're also preparing for our parish participation in Thy Kingdom Come, the Worldwide Prayer Novena. You are all asked to think of five people by name who you will be praying for to come and love Jesus more in their lives. Information is in the bulletin, and the petition box is out by the collection box in the gathering space. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Now, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy 